Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calibrate your display using the Data Color Spider X. One question I continually receive over the years is from the photographer that's trying to print their images for the first time or they send their images off to a lab to be printed and they're really disappointed in the results. Most often the images come back really dark and sometimes the color is off as well. And the reason for that is they're processing their images on a display that isn't calibrated. And now I know most of us think that if we buy a new computer that the monitor or display should be perfectly calibrated. Well, it really isn't. It's calibrated to the point where it just looks okay, but it's not calibrated to the point to where a photographer is processing their images on that machine and then gets a print and it's going to look identical. For that, you really need to calibrate your monitor yourself. And when I mention that to these photographers, most often they're really intimidated. They think it's very difficult to calibrate a monitor and nothing could be further from the truth. Now I mentioned at the top we're going to be using the Data Color Spider X. In the description below this video I'll have links to it. They have several different models. I happen to be using the Elite model. Um, the software just steps you right through it and all you really have to do is hit Next. Now I have the software fired up now and I'll just hit Next and it's telling you make sure your monitor's warmed up, make sure that your lighting conditions are correct in the room you're calibrating your monitor in. Uh, don't have really intense light falling on the display. It's not so good in the room I happen to be in because I'm making a video, I have video lights on. So this isn't the perfect situation, but it's good enough to show you how this is done. And then it tells you to do some other things here and I did everything they've said. So we'll just click next. Now, by default, it should find the type of backlight your display uses. Uh, for a MacBook, it's a wide LED. You can just read through them and just make sure that it found the correct backlight for the display you're using. And like I said, it should have found it automatically. We'll click Next again. And we're going to use the Step-by-Step -step Assistant. As I mentioned, it steps you right through the process. And we'll click Next. And I'm going to do a full calibration, show you how that's done. Full calibration will take less than a minute. When you recalibrate your monitor, it goes really fast, probably like way less than a minute. Uh, we're going to take the, um, the default settings here for gamma, white point, and brightness. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to hit next. And then it's uh, prompting me to place the spider there. And what you do is you pull the lens cap off, and you can see there's a lens there. And then you, this is like a counterweight, and you could pull it up and down the wire so that it, may, it will help you make sure that the... Um, Spider X is laying flat on the display. So just like that, you just lay it so it's flat on the display. And then again, you just hit next. And then when you hit next, it's going to now just display several different colors, black, white, and several shades of gray. And the data color Spider X is looking at those colors and making sure they're true. And if they're not true, it's going to adjust your monitor accordingly. And as I mentioned, this should take uh, less than a minute. I'll just let it do its thing. And when it's done, we'll come back and I'll show you the results. Okay, it's done. It says measurement is completed. I'll click finish. I'll take the data color off the computer and put the lens cap back on. And it's uh, telling me, or it's prompting me to save my new profile. And it's called it Apple Color LCD-1. You could keep that default naming of that profile or give it a new name. I'm just going to keep that default naming and click save. And also below that it had a calibration reminder. How often do you want to re be reminded to calibrate the monitor? I have it set to one month. That's fine. We'll click Next. Um, all right, now it's kind of given us a, a grid of different images. And you could now switch between the calibrated view and the non-calibrated view to see the difference. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the video, but let's just do it. This is the calibrated view. There's the non-calibrated view or uncalibrated view. And there's calibrated, uncalibrated. Now, what I'd like you to do is um, look at this image right here in the top left-hand corner of the grid. And then I'll switch it to the uncalibrated view. So there's uncalibrated, there's calibrated. So you can see that it's really enhanced the reds and the yellows in that image as well. And you can look at the test pattern here as well. And you can see 
that the hue of several of the colors uh, has been changed. Uh, so my monitor wasn't calibrated good enough for me when I process an image to know that the colors I'm looking at are true. So we'll just click Next. Now it's going to show you the colors that are in gamut for different color spaces. Now the sRGB color space is a very, very small color space. Um, and you can see the larger triangle is my monitor. So the sRGB color space is in gamut completely. NTSC and Adobe RGB are larger color space and they're beyond the gamut of this monitor. This, uh, so it's nothing to do with the calibration, it's just this monitor uh, it doesn't have the hardware to display those color spaces. So if I go to NTSC, you can see some of that is out of gamut. Adobe RGB, some of that is out of gamut. And this happens to be a P3 monitor, so that you'll see the triangle is pretty much on top of itself. So everything is in gamut there. And then when you're done, you just click quit. So that's it. It's as easy as that. And I had the profile reminder uh, set to one month. So a month from now, it will remind me to do this again because monitors do drift out of calibration and it's important that you uh, calibrate them often. If you are processing a lot of images and printing often, set that reminder to a shorter length of time, like a week, and do it once a week. Uh, that's my recommendation. So super easy to use. Again, in the description of the video, I'll have links to the different models of the Spider X and you could check them out. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.